Hey everyone, it's Manny. Uh, I thought I would do something, this isn't really different, but I just talked about in a previous video about microphones and my choices and dynamics and definitely take with a grain of salt how I've done this setup for a full band. But for my world and how I want to isolate things and have some bleed, there are some compromises and also some fun things that you can do with dynamics and uh, there's let's see there's one condenser uh, one tube condenser and the rest of them are oh and there's uh, yeah there's two condensers and one um, tube mic the rest of them are dynamics so check it out um, this is a band called Gooms from Los Angeles uh, the bass is running into a DI the reason I chose that this guy plays I mean that he's very musical like Paul McCartney, but he hadn't yet iced his parts. So to have his bass coming into the room around the drums would probably not be a good idea. So I gave him a really good sound in his DI and he definitely was just playing all over the place. But I didn't have to worry about him committing to something or having some high notes he has cut through the set. So that's something to take into consideration is what's going to be leaking into the drum mics. Thankfully, or gratefully, these guitar players, um, Chase and Nicole, they play so great together, and their parts were pretty much locked in. So that was part of the glue of the drums, and their amps are over here. I've got a Vox amp. I'm going to do a little... i uh, going to put that on standby. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but it's dark as night. There is a Bayer 201. So I have a Bayer 201 on that rig. Cool pedals. I have a 58 that he is singing as a guide. And I chose the 58 because it still sounds good. It's a live mic. Now this is a co-rig. Cool Nicole has a Vox amp as well. Does she have it on standby? We're putting it on standby. They took a break. So that's a Sennheiser 421 and a Altec 633A. The reason I chose those two mics is I, in the previous video, I talked about how much I love the 633A. It's an Omni, but secret weapon. This is a Tascam, kind of a mini gobo. They use it for vocals. I love to isolate the guitar rigs. I even did it on this one as well. I can't see it though, but it is in there. And this is a heavy duty blanket. Um, there's a company that makes these producer blankets that are really rad and they have the little holes. They're almost like moving blankets. You can hang them on the walls, but in the drum room, I actually put that in front of the Vox One you never cover anything on the top of these because you'll suffocate the amps and you can blow them. But I just have it kind of giving a little bit of cushion around this. So the reason is, on the drums, my room is carpeted. I do have glass windows that look out into Los Angeles. I have a glass window there. But technically, you could say this is a dead room. I mean, it's pretty much wall-to-wall -wall carpet with some diffusion of all that stuff. So a thing that I do is I put down a board and really this mic is picking up some reflections off the, the hardwood or whatever you would use that would be if it was concrete or whatever it was that you would have. And then I have a, a Mojave MA37 on it. Massive power supply, massive cool mic, dark, super dark. But I have it on the floor because I sometimes use Altec two mics called um, M11s, 21Ds from the 1950s. But with this band playing live and the, and the Voxes, and I'm letting them play at any volume they want, my Altex would definitely pick up more room of the amps than I'd want. So I kind of put this mic over here, got a little bit of stop and a little bit of the sound here. I've also put baffles on each one of those. When I solo the drums, which I'll give you a little sample of, the bleed is really minimal, but it's only because I've done these certain things. So they can play in the room live, they feel good. But when I isolate the drums, I got good isolation. Um, on the kick drum, it's a Bach 195. It's pretty much like a FET 47. 
incredible mic. On the hi-hats, I always talk about these. My favorite Dynamics is a AKG uh, 224E or D224E. Got the same one over there on the ride. Now, I have C12s, which I was gonna use as the overheads, which, you know, you can say fancy pants, guys. But for the same reasons of Dynamics picking up only what's in front of them, these condensers, if I would have used the condenser as a single overhead or double overhead, would have picked up a lot of the other musicians over there and over here. So in this band, I had to really think about how was, how was I going to set it up? I came in the night before and really kind of plotted out what do I want to use, knowing that these, these, uh, Chase and Nicole would slam the guitars, and I don't want them to turn down. I want them to play naturally what they feel and what their amps sound good. So that being said, I used a dynamic. This is an AKG D24 known as the Frank Sinatra microphone. Also, the internals are Ringo Starr's D19, which you see over a lot of pictures of his drums. This mic is... I mean, it's like top notch. It really sounds great. It's expensive, but I really love it. It's a mono overhead. So then I have a spot mic on the ride. I got a spot mic on the hi-hat, but I also have a simplistic setup that's dynamics. Uh, the snare is a 57. Toms are uh, Audio-Technica's 230s. That's an Audio-Technica 230. Then I have a P48, which is a... Um, very cool it's in the it's like the second tier after akg made the eb mics there it is right there so it looks almost the same as any 414 doesn't look like an eb because the eb uh c12s had brass capsules and they're like silver this is the one right after it. it's called a p48 which is a true uh 48 phantom power mic I think the newer ones could probably run off a of nine volt. This one has to have full fledged 48 to really sound its best. So uh, it's a little blurry. There it is. And I did send it to Heiserman, uh, which is a wonderful microphone company. He makes brass capsules. That has a C12 brass capsule in it, but it's not a tube. It's a um, condenser, and I have a set for. Uh, hypercardioid. I have it so it's just picking up right under the snare. Now why would you put a fancy mic that after being modified really expensive? Because on the bottom of the snare it sounds huge. It has tons of low end, really fat, and you can blend it in the mix. Now the drumming is really cool. This is a John Bonham uh, reissued Toms. Uh, there's a whole kit this drummer had but I really loved my Ludwig. So we did a little mix match. That is also a condenser. Sorry about that, I forgot about that one. That's a Shure SM98. The snare, I'm not gonna hit it. We had tuned it to C. Uh, that was the one that sounded the best and it worked out good in the band. And I'll come in per periodically and check the tuning. I have someone hit a C and it's me, 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 me. And then I tune the snare and you can do it with all the toms. These ones aren't really matter. They, they've held well. Drummer hits it really hard and this lug right here ends up slipping a bit. This is a um, 1967 Ludwig uh, Superphonic, I believe. These hi-hats are one of my favorites. He had these Pisces. I think those are John... Those two are John Bonham Pisties. Then he had a 1950s um, ride that he got from somewhere. I forgot the true history of that. But anyways, that's the rundown. I'll give you some samples of these drums. Um, sounds pretty exciting. That's a live rundown of what I'll be doing. And they ran inside. Um, the kicks and the snares were ran through a Vitas MA5s, which are thicker than a brick preamps. They're kind of like soft knees, but... They still sound powerful. The toms, I ran them into um, Cytex. Uh, the overhead is into, which one did I run? An API, a um, uh, vintage API that Brent Averill racked up. The guitars are all in Brent Averill APIs. And the bass is running into a Cytec. 
I sometimes like to run the SciTech for really clean things that I want a big sound. The uh, Mojave is going into the SciTech because if I ran it into like a, you know, a thick Neve, or, I, I don't want to get any extra artifacts or sounds. I really want the microphone to be captured. So ribbon mics, room mics, tube mics, anything over brass, you know, overheads, those are all going to SciTech. Except for that bad boy. Anyways, that's it. Let's see if we can see downtown from here. Can you see it? All right, it's there somewhere. There it is. All right, let's uh, do some little audio samples and see what havoc I created here.